Hi Webflow friends, my name is Reese Walker. I'm a designer and Webflow expert. And today I'm gonna to go through how I set up FAQs in pretty much every single project that I do. Uh, this is a really straightforward way to build FAQs. I find I'm doing this over and over and over again. Um, so I wanted to create a clonable and do a little walkthrough of it for you. Uh, there's a ton of tutorials on how to build really great FAQs with animations and um, really in-depth setups. Um, this is not going to be that. This is going to be a quick, fast, uh, really good overview of how to build a simple FAQ. I will link some of my favorite other tutorials for FAQs below uh, that go a little bit more into depth about the structure and kind of principle behind what you're setting up but this is going to be um, a bite-sized version of those. Uh, so perfect. So I've already built my setup here um, just to kind of go through an introduction. So we've got our question within a box. We click on it, we get our answer, and the plus turns into a minus. So obviously with Webflow, you can style this in any way that you want to, um, but this is how I've done it for the purposes of this walkthrough. Um, fantastic. So to get started with this, I'm going to delete everything that I have so that we can start from scratch. So under my styles here, I'm going to remove all of the previous styles that I had. And I'm also going to change this FAQ rep to just old FAQ so that we are not cheating. Um, perfect. So now I have a blank screen and I'm going to minimize myself. So I have kind of a basic setup here with a section and a container, and these are kind of your base elements that you're going to build within. I also have a CMS collection called FAQs already set up. Within the FAQs, um, if we look at the settings for the CMS collection, I have a question, I have an answer, which is a rich text field, and I also have an order number. So within the order number, I'm gonna use this to sort our FAQs to have the smallest number appear first. Um, I end up using this number <laughs> CMS uh, item custom field within a lot of projects and a lot of collections to be able to manually decide the order not based on alphabetical date, etc. cetera. Uh, so knowing that, I've got three just sample FAQs in here with their question, answer, and order set up. Fantastic. So let's get started with building our FAQ. First of all, I'm going to enter or add in my CMS collection and I'm going to tie this to my FAQs. So immediately I can see that this collection is now pulling in my FAQs. It's got the little placeholder label here uh, for each of those items. I'm going to name all of my CMS um, base lists. So I'm going to call this FAQ list wrapper. Inside is going to be FAQ list, and then I'm going to have FAQ item. Perfect. So now with an FAQ item, I can start adding in the pieces that are actually going to make up this interactive element. First of all, I'm going to add a div, and I'm going to call this FAQ wrap. Um, this is going to be the parent that contains our question, our answer, and our plus and minus sign. Uh, within FAQ wrap, I'm going to add two divs within it. The first one um, is going to be called FAQ question wrap, if I can spell that correctly. And then I'm going to copy and paste that and duplicate it and call it FAQ answer wrap. Fantastic. So now looking at our navigator panel, you can see we've got all of our collection uh, kind of base elements here. We've got our FAQ wrap and within FAQ wrap, we have FAQ question wrap and FAQ answer wrap. Uh, within FAQ question wrap, I'm going to add a piece of text and I'm going to tie it to my question. So now I've got this piece of text, it's showing the question um, and we can continue from there. Um, so FAQ question wrap is going to hold our question text, but it's also going to hold that plus and minus um, little interactive piece that we have as a label. So in order to do that, I'm going to make this display flex. Um, I'm going to align it to the center and I'm going to justify it space between. So now if I click on that piece of text, I can see that it is sitting at the front of my FAQ question wrap. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to call this text block question. 
because uh, that's going to come in handy. And then I'm also going to add in our plus and minus. So I'm going to add in a div and I'm going to call this plus wrap. I am going to make this display flex, align center, and justify center. And within plus wrap, I'm going to add two more divs. The first one I'm going to call plus horizontal. And this is going to be the horizontal bar of our plus minus. So let's give this a width of 100% and a height of two pixels. Um, I'm going to give this a background color just of black. Um, and it's not displaying anything right now and that's because we missed a step here. So plus wrap, um, our little box that's gonna contain our horizontal and vertical lines needs to have a width and height um, set for it. So I'm gonna give this a width and a height of 22 pixels. So now I can see that I've got my horizontal bar there spanning the width of our wrap. Um, and I'm going to copy and paste that plus horizontal div um, so that I can style our vertical bar. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to duplicate this class and I'm going to call it plus vertical. Uh, plus vertical is basically going to have the opposite properties of plus horizontal. So instead of having a width of 100% and a height of two pixels, I'm going to give it a height or width of two pixels and a height of 100%. Uh, so we can see now we've got kind of a T shape happening, which is not necessarily the plus shape that we want. So in order to have our vertical line sit in the middle of our plus wrap, uh, we need to set this to position absolute. Um, but again, we missed a step with our plus wrap. In order for any absolute positioned element to um, stay within its bounds or the element that it's kind of relative to, the parent element needs to have a position of relative or absolute fix, etc. Uh, so now we've got our plus wrap with its width and height. Our position is relative and we've got our plus horizontal and our plus vertical sitting nicely as a little cross uh, plus mark within that piece. Fantastic. So that element is kind of ready and set to go and we can start styling our answer. So within the add panel, I'm going to add a rich text element because that is how we've styled our answers. And I'm going to connect this rich text element to our answer. Uh, so now I can see I've got our question and our answer and our plus, and this is kind of everything that we need to get going. However, this is not really a great <laughs> setup for how this looks. We've got the same hierarchy happening for the question and the answer. And there's not really a lot of space happening between here. So what I'm going to do is style our question. So we've got our question text selected. Um, I'm going to make this black. Um, for its font weight. And I'm also going to create some division between the FAQs themselves. So with FAQ wrap selected, I'm going to add padding all around this element. Let's give it a really generous padding of 20 pixels. And I'm also going to give it a background color of white. Um, our body background is light gray. So having a, a white FAQ is a nice little contrast here. I'm going to give our box a radius of 10 pixels. So we've just got a nice rounded element happening. And then I'm also going to add some padding um, between the FAQ item elements themselves. You can do this in a couple ways. Um, you can definitely just add spacing below, add a margin to the bottom of these. Um, but with that, you're also going to get um, that happening on the on the last element that could cause uh, some margin here and maybe you just want something to sit tight uh, below it. So usually what I like to do instead of this is I'll make my FAQ list a grid, but just with one column and I'll add 16 pixels of padding between them is fine. So now I have my three FAQ items We've got our question, our answer, and our little plus. Um, obviously you can style this in any way that you want, <laughs> but for the purposes of this, we've just gone super basic. Uh, fantastic, so I think now that we have this, we just wanna make sure our rich text element has a class associated with it as well. So just call that answer. 
And at this point, we've got all of our elements set up and we are ready to get going on our interaction. Um, fantastic. So the way that I am going to set this up is I'm going to have the entire FAQ wrap be clickable uh, to open and close our frequently asked question. So to get that going, I'm going to go to my interactions panel with FAQ wrap selected and under inter inter interactions um, under element trigger, I'm going to add a new interaction on mouse click. So on the first click, we want the FAQ to open. And on the second click, we want the FAQ to close. So for uh, our first click, I'm going to start an animation. I am going to delete the previous ones that we had in there. So there's no cheating. Um, and I'm going to add a new timed animation. So I'm going to call this FAQ open. And I'm going to start our animation. So in order to um, have this FAQ work properly, we want to not show the answer when someone first lands on this page. So to do that, we're going to set some initial states here. We want to set initial states for our FAQ answer wrap and our answer uh, to both hide it and uh, have its opacity go down. So first of all, I'm going to add a hide show for FAQ answer wrap. And I'm going to hide show uh, display none. Um, within here as well, I'm also going to make the size of FAQ answer wrap to be zero pixels. Um, and set that as an initial state. We'll also set this as initial state. And finally, the last initial state that we're going to want to set is the opacity. And I'm not going to set the opacity to FAQ answer wrap. I'm going to set it to FA to the answer rich text element. Um, I'll set that as an initial state and put the opacity to zero. Fantastic. So this is kind of what we want the uh, interaction to start as. We've got our question, our plus, and our nice little box. Uh, but now we want to actually show that answer. So under actions, uh, I'm going to select my FAQ answer wrap. Um, first things first, we need to show that element again. So I'm going to add a new um, action for FAQ answer wrap, and I'm going to display block. So now I can see that that piece is showing up within the element that we have. Um, but because we've set its size to zero pixels, um, it's not actually showing anything here. Uh, so our next step here is to add a size change to this. So we want the size of FAQ answer wrap to be height auto. So now we can see that that's taking up um, the same height that it should have um, as, a, as a kind of like native element here. Um, and the last piece that we want to do is change that opacity for the answer back to 100. Fantastic. So we can see our opacity is back at 100. I want the opacity to happen kind of at the same size here. Um, and then our last piece, so we'll do a little preview here. Fantastic. I'm actually going to separate those. Um, and our last piece that we want to have here is have our plus turn into a minus. So I'm going to select my plus vertical. So our up and down bar within the plus, and I'm going to add a new act a new action to rotate it by negative 90 degrees. So now I can see that my plus has turned into a minus. I'm going to want this to happen at the same time that the size is changing. Um, so I'm going to select all of these and give them the same duration and easing. So we'll give them a duration of 0 0.3 seconds um, with an easing of in out quad. And now if I do a preview here, I can see we change our size, the answer turns to 100% opacity, and then at the same time our plus is turning into a minus. Fantastic. Okay, we'll hit save here and then we're gonna do a Webflow Pro hack that I first heard from Timothy Ricks, um, who is a legend. And um, this tip has saved me so much time doing interactions on a number of things throughout all of my builds. So instead of rebuilding this and remembering all the different pieces that we had um, to kind of reverse what we did on the FAQ open, we're actually just going to duplicate our FAQ open 
and change its name to FAQ Clothes. Um, and within here, there's some really fast steps that we can do to just get this done um, really, really efficiently here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all of our initial states. So I'm just gonna select those three and they're gone. Um, and that is because we don't wanna have any initial states here. We're just gonna reorder the kind of other elements that we have. Uh, so this is basically in the reverse order that we want to have it close in. So we're going to reorder this um, based on that. So I'm going to take my hide show for FAQ answer wrap and I'm going to drag it to the last point. Um, I'm also going to take my answer opacity and make that happen first. So within here, I'm going to change the opacity to zero for our answer because we want that answer to fade out first. And then we're going to change our FAQ answer wrap size back to zero pixels. Our plus vertical rotate is gonna go back to zero degrees and our hide show is going to go to display none. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna apply this to the class just in case I built this across my site and I want all of my FAQs to behave, behave in the same way. And the last piece here, we can see that if we preview this, um, the FAQ is opening and closing just like we want it to, um, but our mouse is still staying the same. So a user might not know that this is a clickable element um, if their mouse is still staying on the default cursor. So the last thing that we're gonna do here is under FAQ wrap, I'm gonna change the cursor to our pointer and there's other things that you could do here, like I could add a hover state to this, um, change its color, I could make it grow, lots of different things you can do here, um, but I will leave it at that. So now if we go back to our preview, I can open this question, I can close this question, and it will work for all of our items. Um, last thing here, um, we'll utilize that sort order so I'm going to pull in the order number and I want it to sort smallest to largest. I'm going to hit save um, and I can see now that my first question is appearing first um, and so on. So this is essentially how I build all of my FAQs across websites, across client websites, all of that. Um, so hopefully this is helpful for you if you are looking for more in-depth tutorials or how to add schema markup to these, which I also do um, for client websites. I'll put some links below. Um, but other than that, I'm going to try and do a few more of these tutorials for things like navigation, footers, just kind of the common elements that I'm using over and over across Webflow builds. So if there's anything in particular you'd like to see, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Um, or connect with me on Twitter at Grace on Grid. Um, thanks so much for watching and we'll talk soon.